we're gonna be doing something I've been thinking about for a little while, which is uh, getting the airplane out in the air and testing out what kind of performance we get at various altitudes. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. But first, we can uh, give you a little little bit of introduction to the airplane, so you have a little bit of a baseline and know what's going on with it. Um, it is a 1964 Mooney M20E. It's the very first year of the E models. Um, it has the stock uh, IO360A1A engine, which is the same engine used on Piper Arrows and a lot of other various uh, 200 horsepower airplanes. Uh, it is different than the engine in the 201 model. Um, the 201 model has a uh, has a different valve geometry, so they redid a special engine just for just for that airplane. So this airplane is a little bit different than stock. Um, so you can see it has the uh, has what's called a 201 style cowling. It is not the official 201 cowling. This one is made by, I believe, Southwest Texas Aero, but I'll put a uh, little note up above uh, when I check the logbooks to see who exactly it is. Uh, the big difference is between this and the stock cowl, it has the uh, Cessna style oil door. It has the uh, little aerodynamic hump here behind the spinner. It has the smaller, more aerodynamic openings for uh, cooling air. And this does make quite a big difference, by the way. The uh, I've flown a uh, year, I, an M20E of the exact same year before for someone I was doing a biennial for. And uh, that airplane ran a lot hotter than this one. I mean, the oil temperature is probably 40 degrees hotter than that other airplane. And cylinder heads were probably 40 to 50 degrees hotter as well. Um, so that helps quite a bit. Uh, the big difference between this and the official 201 cowling, sorry for the, uh, the, the sun shot there, um, is the front. The front of this cowling is much more blunt, whereas the real 201 cowling cuts in a lot more to be a little more aerodynamic. But the one thing that this cowling does have that the official 201 cowling does not have is the power boost door there, which we will uh, talk about a little bit. The other thing, uh, modification that this airplane has is the 201 windshield and if you look closer into there you can see right around here there's a line and that line this side of the line is where the old windshield used to connect to which meant it went up from that line up to here which made it much steeper then this area out here has been added for uh, when this 201 windshield was added and that's it. I've been told that there is maybe a couple more little tiny fairings and stuff, but most likely they don't do anything. So uh, those really aren't interesting. So let's go ahead and hop in the airplane, get in the air, and we'll see what it can do. All right, everybody. Well, we're below the uh, Detroit Class Bravo airspace today, or right now. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, just do a baseline reading here at 2,500 feet. Uh, 2,500 feet. So we have right now going 138 knots indicated. So traffic 10739 is uh, turning 71 one degrees. 10.1 on the fuel flow. So I'll pull up my true airspeed calculator. And that's giving us a true airspeed of 145.6 knots. And that is Richard Peak, by the way. And now that we're up from underneath the Bravo, let's go ahead and go up to 4500 and we'll take a data point there. One thing I forgot to mention on the last data point is I like to, uh, and what it was used on the last data point, is I like to generally cruise with uh, 23 inches of manifold pressure. And that's largely because uh, I tend to run at Lena Peak. The uh, 23 inches of manifold pressure gives me just a little bit more uh, detonation margin for helping me find that uh, uh, the peak. And then leaning it out afterwards without having to worry too much, as much about detonation with the higher power setting. All right, we're up at 4,500 feet. Uh, we'll do a data point here. We'd expect us to pick up some true airspeed uh, if we're using the exact same power setting as the uh, density altitude increases. 
so we'll give that a shot. I just need to trim it out here. So it's important to trim Mo a Mooney for uh, best airspeed, and that is because of the way the trim works on the Mooney. Unlike uh, most airplanes that have a trim tab, the Mooney, the Mooney, the entire tailplane uh, pivots, and the idea behind that is it keeps the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Uh, perfectly aligned with the airflow, reducing drag, and then there's also additional drag if an airplane has a uh, has a trim tab, because the trim tabs move, there's a little arm to move the trim tab, and since Mooney was all about getting rid of uh, drag wherever possible, they went with an entirely pivoting uh, tail section in order to reduce uh, drag as much as possible. All right, we just need to get it uh, cleaned out here, and then we'll be uh, good to go for our uh, data point. Okay, here we go. Everything seems to be uh, seems to be stabilized. Take our pictures. We are showing, I'd say, 139 knots indicated airspeed. Uh, 64 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. 10.1 on the fuel flow. This is also Rich Peak, by the way. Gives us true airspeed of 151.1. So we picked up uh, about four and a half knots from uh, 2,500 feet to here, just by going up. All right, so let's keep it going up. We'll go up to 6,500 and see what we got. So as we go up to 6,500 feet, just a side note, that's usually the lowest altitude I like to cruise at. Um, Sure. If you notice, if you watch any of my cross-country videos, you notice I tend to fly pretty high. That's something I wouldn't have done in the Cessna, but it seems to, uh, yeah, it's a, a high-performance airplane. This, the sweet spot of this airplane, really seems to be around 7,500 feet. So, barring any clouds or any weather uh, that doesn't allow me to do it, uh, 6,500 is generally my lowest cruising altitude. We'll, we'll see why once you see the data. Uh, the main thing is that your engine runs much more efficiently at uh, wide open throttle, or the more open the throttle is, the, uh, the more efficient your engine runs at. And that's why smaller engines in cars get better fuel economy than larger engines. It's because they're usually running you know, more, more open throttles during their, uh, their cruise power settings. And the reason for that is when the piston moves downward to suck in the air, with a wide open throttle, it's not sucking against anything, so the air moves in very freely. Well, it's actually sucking against the air filter, uh, but it's not sucking against the closed throttle blade, and the closed throttle blade will suck a lot of power out of that, uh, or a lot of energy out of that piston moving downward. And if you want to do an experiment to figure out or see for yourself why this is, uh, you can try and take two deep breaths as fast as you can. Uh, say the first deep breath is, uh, with your mouth wide open, and this would be like a wide open throttle, and if you do that, you go like that, you'll notice there's very little resistance on your diaphragm for pulling in that air. But if you do it with your lips kind of puckered, uh, with a small opening at your lips, you try to do that, kind of like this, you'll notice that there's a real tightness in your chest, and it's actually really hard to do when you uh, try to pull it in, and that's what happens when the piston's coming down against the closed throttle. And that will actually will slightly slow the piston down and take power out of it. So with a wide open throttle at the same power setting in terms of uh, manifold pressure, you will achieve uh, more power at the propeller, and that means uh, faster airspeed. But for the same fuel flow, because it's still the same manifold pressure and uh, RPM combination. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is we'll do uh, we'll do Rich Peak, 6,500 feet, waiting for the uh, airspeed to stabilize and make sure I'm nice and trimmed out. All right, so we'll go ahead and take our pictures. We are showing a 138 knots. Still 10.1. That gives us 140, 100, sorry, 154.5. While I do this, calculate this, I'm going to lean out to lean a peak. And our cylinder head temperature was uh, 326. 
Yeah, 154.5 knots true airspeed. It's not too bad. Now we'll move into uh, the Lena Peak regime. All right, here we are, 6,500 feet, a peak. Take our pictures. We're showing 130 knots indicated airspeed. Two ninety-seven cylinder head temp. Outside air temperature sixty-one degrees still. Cool flow. Seven point nine. Yellow traffic set to sixty-four to golf. Turn left crosswind one zero double. Okay, if I enter all that into the calculator, it gives us a true airspeed of one forty-six point six. So we essentially lost uh, eight eight knots true airspeed, but we gained uh, 2.2 gallons per hour. So you can make that trade off what you will. All right, so we'll head up to 7,500 feet, start heading back towards Willow Run, and then we'll uh, do our last test up at that altitude. All right, everybody, let's take our pictures now. We're at the... Uh, or six, sorry, 7,500 feet. So it's 134 knots indicated airspeed. We are at 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Fuel flow is 9.6 gallons per hour. Plug that all in. And we get a true airspeed of 153.3 knots. I won't do a Lena Peak here, um, but because at this point, usually I'd be running the power boost. Now what the power boost is, it's a little door, I think I showed you in the in the pre-flight, that opens up if you open it. Now there are a couple of rules I have for using the power boost. One is the aircraft limitation is no using it in visible moisture. Um, the other one is I will only use it when I'm above the clouds in smooth air. So. The idea being is above any thermals. So the only issue, you know, if you have your door open, is that dust or bugs or something can fly in your engine, which is bad for your engine. Well, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with the fact as long as I'm above any thermals that might be out there, uh, dust and bugs, which the only way they would get this high is by being carried up in the thermals. So if we're above the thermals, pretty uh, pretty comfortable with the fact that there's not going to be anything harmful in the uh, in the so I will use the power boost. So what the power boost does is it opens that door and it bypasses the air filter. And like I said earlier about sucking against the closed throttle blade, well, there are losses sucking against that air filter as well. And not, not so that will give you a little bit more uh, manifold pressure because there's not gonna be a pressure loss across that air filter. Uh, additionally, because we're going fast, we get a little bit of uh, ram air pressure. So we'll usually gain about one to 1 1.2 uh, is a manifold pressure by opening it. So let's go ahead and open it, see what happens. You see we're at 21.9 inches of manifold pressure. I open it up. There we go, manifold pressure starts increasing. It looks like it's gonna settle out at uh, 23.1 inches. So we gain uh, 1.2 inches of manifold pressure. Let's figure out what that means in terms of uh, speed. All right, here we go. Pick this up to 139 knots. Be 140, we'll call it 139 knots. Still 58 degrees outside. We're back to 10.1. I was gonna say 10.2 on the fuel flow, so we'll call it 10.2. That gives us 159.0 knots rear speed. So the reason I'm doing this video, I had this inspiration, I was out flying yesterday. And I was up and I did a true rear speed calculation at this exact same configuration. I got uh, the, actually the highest airspeed of ever, true airspeed I've seen in this airplane at cruise, which is 161.2 knots. So above 160. Uh, that's pretty pretty happy with that, especially burning uh, 10 gallons per hour. So now we're doing this. Let's go ahead and we'll do a Lena Peak uh, test. 
shut off the uh, autopilot because we need to retrim because the power is going to drop a bit. So whenever possible, this is how I cruise this airplane because it's a good combination of uh, speed with a power boost and fuel savings lean up, lean up peak. All right, so let's do it. Take our pictures here. We got uh, 130 knots, indicated airspeed. So we're at 57 on the temperature. Eight gallons per hour fuel flow. That is 150.0. So 150 knots on the nose, eight gallons per hour. That is why I love this airplane. All right, well, we're getting close to Detroit Metro's airspace. I'm gonna have to descend to get underneath the shelf. Um, talk to you a bit on the descent, and we'll run. Yeah, for Moody 6 Delta Romeo, if I'm gonna uh, turn off the end, uh, can I do a long approach on this one? 6 Delta Romeo, long landing is approved. I 6 Delta Romeo. Yep, it's a little bit of a weird base to final. Unfortunately, with this uh, runway construction, you know, there's only two turnoffs on this runway right now at the, each end. Uh, people doing pattern work, it gets really hard to... Hard to, uh, for the air traffic controllers to get everyone in, so uh, I try to help them out whenever possible by landing as long as possible or as short as possible. Speed things up. That was a float. Nice and greasy. So perhaps I'll take it. Six Delta Romeo, left on Bravo Cross 23 left to park in this frequency. Thanks for the help. All right, left on Bravo Cross 23 left to parking with you. Moody 16 Six Delta Romeo. All right, everybody, that's it for the performance test. Hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, especially the uh, fuel economy numbers. I think. Uh, you know, not to mention you could eat. I mean, if I want to run it close to 160 knots, I got that option. If I want to run it over 20 miles per gallon, I got that option. And even at 20 miles per gallon, you know, at 8,000 or 7,500 feet, we're still getting 150 knots. So uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I think, uh, now you guys know why uh, I love this airplane so much. And uh, yeah, and I do love Moonies. And uh, you can accuse me of being a fanboy. I do. Uh, recommend Moonies to like basically everyone who wants to buy a four-seat airplane um, but you know I know what you're saying um, you know, but Moonies are this and Moonies are cramped and Moonies blah 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 and you can't work on them and all this other stuff uh, there are probably more myths and rumors about Moonies than any other airplane there is so that's going to be the topic of my next video until then talk to you guys later